Tell tales. Oh yeah. <laughs> a lot of moose came on off of this bottle over the years. So. Well, as we were kids, especially. Remember back in, um, old Mackie White used to live up the road there. Young Mackie and myself and Jerry O'Regan and sometimes uh, Jerry Foot and Patty. We spent a lot of time walking up through there, nosing around, and like the young fools that we were. But uh, a lot of memories. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You ever stop in the grandfather's cabin? Never did see it, you know that? Oh, really? Never did. I don't. I knew it was there, but we never did go to it. Now, a couple of times the boys went, but uh, I didn't go at that, that time, that trip. Well, I remember when old Steve White used to have a camp down here. Yeah, it was my uncle. Yeah. I remember him really good. He died in that camp. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that camp, he uh, remembered that. It wasn't very old. No. But, uh, well, of course, all that crowd, the old man and your grandfather and all that bunch here, you all hung around together for years, you know? Yeah. You know, between a few card games and a few swallies. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and a few tall tales. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of stories were told. Uh, especially the old Well, you ones. know what? They could tell stories back there. Oh, and so a lot of some of them was really true, too. And, and we've lost that ability. Yeah. You know, uh, we've got yeah. so much other entertainment. Back uh, then, story time was, you know, stories well, told around the supper table and, and the right. evenings. Or if you sit down even by the brook having, having a cup of tea, you know, the stories. But there's still a few tales, but not like it was back then. No, and people have lost yeah. their, their ability to tell a good tale. Well, I can remember your grandfather. We used to call him, like, nicknamed him Laughing Charlie. I remember that uh, he used to walk from home there, and he, I don't know which way he come across country, but he used to walk there, his river. Oh, yes. And uh, st still, to this day, I don't know if he done it one day or he went up and he stayed overnight or what, but he used to do some walking. Oh, yes. Jeez. Oh, Trying yeah. to catch up with them little tiny short legs. <laughs> he, he, he'd walk to uh, he'd, he'd walk to Deer Lake in uh, in two days, one yeah. night spent. Jeez. You sleep one night on the, on the, on the, on the walk. And yeah, he used to go man. there and cut wood, pulp wood. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, they had no choice. There was no such thing as transportation in. No. If you had a horse, you were a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks like there's one just down over here, huh? Moose? Bottom part of the bog here. Huh? Just in the dark green section down below. Yeah. Yeah, definitely she babied here. Here's the lone stranger. We knew we went somewhere. Doing a little bit of feeding. I have seen hundreds upon hundreds of moose here on this bog over the years. She's a uh, there had to be one for sure. We never come here very often yet, never seen one. That's right, yeah. Here's a long caribou there, though. Lonesome Charlie, we call him. <laughs> Had something to wait to wave at it. A lot of times that would bring him right over. I was heading into my cabin to clean up the trail a little bit but I decided to stop here and try this new uh, little fishing pond. Well it's not a new pond but it's going to be my first time fishing here. So uh, here's the fish I just caught. 
small and that tight. We'll go back. Yes, sir. After catching a quick feed of trout, it's time to head over to see if I can make it into the cabin site. These side-by-sides are the real answer for getting around back here. Okay, so that, that's the only tree that has to come down. It's right in, in the trail. That one will have to come down. But unfortunately, the snow may still be a little too deep right here. Check that out. Can you believe that? It's the 2nd of June today, and I still can't make it into my cabin site. The chainsaw sure makes quick work of living out the road. I forgot my chainsaw helmet and ear defenders, so I have to keep the cutting to a minimum. Although I can't make it all the way in yet, it's nice to be able to make it in this far. I'll give it about another five days before I try again. And I'm sure by then I'll be able to make it all the way into the cabin site. Well, judging by how much snow has melted in the last week, I would say it's a very likely possibility that I'll be getting into the cabin uh, in a week's time or even less than a week. So I did clean up the tree right behind us, so I'll show you that right now. So I don't know if these two trees will stay, what I was thinking about doing is putting an archway above them. So that'll be gone, it's only a little bit left. This was all snow last week. Seven days ago, this was full of snow, two and a half, three feet deep. So, yeah, that'll be gone. That'll be gone in four or five days, I think. Temperatures are getting up there now. We got rain, I think, for the next two or three days. So, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you already haven't done so. And you're going to see a lot more of the uh, cabin building process. How I select my land, why I select it. And I will uh, document the entire build from from the floor to the ceiling from floor to the roof